Vatican City, a one-of-a-kind sovereign nation of some 500 people carved out of the center of Rome. With its massive dome, St. Peter's Basilica dominates the city as a symbolic spirit center for 1.2 billion Catholics around the world. The Vaticano obelisk, the sometimes overlooked counterpart to the dome, stands like an exclamation point in the center of St. Peter's Square, a shout-out to ancient Egypt where it's from. Looking from above, we mark the square's axes based on two of the cardinal points laid out on either side of the obelisk by Gian Lorenzo Bernini as part of the square's redesign. Following this projection, we see that it comes within seven kilometers of the main peak of Easter Island, an interesting coincidence considering Bernini completed the square's redesign 55 years before Europeans first visited the island. Looking more closely at St. Peter's Basilica, we see that it is rotated slightly to the Easter Island axis line. Examining this orientation shows that the projection of the basilica's roofline intersects the Christopher Columbus Monument in Barcelona, Spain. This highly symbolic monument to one of our culture's foundational memes stands at the spot where he returned to Spain after his iconic first voyage to the New World to report to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. In addition to laying out the square, Bernini spent 50 years embellishing the basilica with Baroque grandiosity. Two of his works in particular stand out as being the most important in the basilica, the Baldacchino and St. Peter's throne behind it. The ten-story bronze Baldacchino centerpiece is said to be the tallest bronze structure in the world. It stands over St. Peter's tomb and houses the high altar. Since these talismans lie along the Columbus Column alignment, Bernini, unwittingly or not, actually marked two important ley lines when you consider the Easter Island alignment. Now, St. Peter's Basilica is built on the ruins of Old St. Peter's Basilica, so its orientation hasn't changed since construction first began around 320 AD. This suggests, perhaps, that this spot in Barcelona with such potent New World symbology was marked since the pivotal reign of Constantine the Great, who ordered the old basilica to be built. Notice Old St. Peter's Basilica also features the Vaticano obelisk before it was moved, standing with its original dome counterpart. In the first video, I show how this line from the Columbus Column threads right up La Rambla and extends to the Comox Valley where it is aligned with the valley's hexagonal bedrock. I recommend watching that first video to understand this. There's a lot going on here. Like a fractal in the valley, Hornby Island also expresses hexagonal bedrock geometry, except that it is rotated 30 degrees to the hexagon formed by the coast of Vancouver Island. In this case, the hexagon is oriented to Machu Picchu straight down the southwest facing ridge. Now consider Easter Island once more. In this view, with vertically exaggerated relief, you can see the island is dominated by three prominent peaks. These peaks are very close to defining the three apexes of a pentagram, much like Hornby's ridges define two sides of a hexagon. We can define the pentagram geometry on Easter Island using a line from the Hornby apex. This orientation results in an exact fit with the two peaks of Easter Island and the third off by about one half a kilometer. A line through the best fitted peaks runs exactly through the heart of Washington, D.C. In fact, if the line is brought to the dome of the Capitol building, the pentagram relationship with the Hornby Island apex is as exact as it can be in Google Earth better than one one-hundredth of a degree. If you instead bring the line to the White House, it runs through an apex of the Pentagon World War Headquarters and nearly bisects it, a compelling alignment considering the island itself is pentagonal. Like the Vatican, the counterpart to the Capitol Building Dome is the Washington Monument Obelisk. It is the tallest obelisk and tallest granite structure in the world. Given that the Hexagon 6 of Hornby and the Pentagon 5 of Easter Island led us to Washington, I must point out that the Masonic Washington Monument is 555.5 feet tall, which is equal to 6,666 inches. This theme carries through to St. Peter's Square, as the Vaticano obelisk was erected by Pope Sixtus V. He also completed the Dome of St. Peter's Basilica, providing the counterbalance to the yang of the obelisk. The Vaticano obelisk's important is obvious not only by its location, 
but also by the fact that it is the only ancient obelisk in Rome that has remained standing since it was first erected in 37 AD. It is also the first monumental obelisk erected in modern times. Sixtus V used a thousand men to move it from its former position a few hundred meters to the west. This was only the first of four ancient obelisks he erected in his short tenure as Pope, including the three largest in Rome and the largest standing in the world. Besides moving these obelisks, Sixtus V was responsible for much geomantic redesign of Rome, including the creation of alignments by opening up long stretches of road. The story of these alignments is quite a tale in itself and is the subject of a later video in this series. In Barcelona, we take another look at the Columbus Column to Comox Valley Line and see how it also comes within 85 meters of a hexagonal obelisk. This six-sided obelisk is very unique. Four-sided obelisks are relatively common in urban design, but I've not seen another example of hexagonal obelisks in four years that I've been researching this material. The obelisk marks the intersection of Ave Diagonal, significant as the longest street in Barcelona, and Passiag da Gracia, Spain's most exclusive street with some of Barcelona's top tourist draws. This entire 11-kilometer street lines up with Mount Kailash. The imposing pyramidal peak of the Himalayas towers over the surrounding Tibetan landscape. It has the unique distinction of being one of the world's most venerated holy places, a supremely sacred site of four religions and billions of people. Mount Kailash is arguably the world's single most important example of physical geography and human geography merged in one location. Seeing this connection between the Vatican and Barcelona, we might ask if there is also a Roman connection to Mount Kailash. Consider Campidoglio Square at the top of Capitoline Hill in Rome. Like the Vatican's importance, Capitoline Hill is the most important spot of the Roman Empire. It is the only section of the city to evade capture by the barbarians when Rome fell. Note that the English word capital, as in capital building in Washington, derives from Capitoline. Campidoglio is a significant urban plan designed by Michelangelo that combines an oval shape with a diamond pattern as a play on the previous Renaissance geometries of the circle and square. Its center springs slightly so that one senses that he is standing on the exposed segment of a gigantic egg, but buried at the center of the city at the center of the world. Observing a line drawn to the Great Pyramid, there can be little doubt that the square was oriented in this direction. The Great Pyramid itself is only one degree off from being lined up on the other end. Doubt is further minimalized when you see two sphinxes flanking the base of the entrance silently confirming this orientation. The plazas laid out such the Basilica of St. Mary of the Altar of Heaven is aligned with the spiral. This basilica is built on the highest part of Capitoline Hill out of its previous incarnation as Temple of Juno Moneta. It's worth noting that this is where Roman coins were first minted, initiating the ancient practice of associating mints with temples. Moneta is the origin of the English words monetary and money. It turns out that this orientation creates a perpendicular that is aligned with Mount Kailash from both the church within one-tenth of a degree and from the square from within one-twentieth of a degree. The bearing to Mount Kailash is almost exactly 45 degrees to the azimuth running to the Great Pyramid. Making it exactly 45 degrees, it comes within 2 kilometers of Mount Kailash and continues along to within 15 kilometers of Mount Everest. Project the bearing to the other side of the world and it passes through the Nazca Lines in Peru, coming within 5 kilometers of the center of the famous geoglyphs. We'll take a global view and connect Mount Kailash to North America via Mount Whitney. It's the tallest peak north of Teotihuacan, except for a small area clustered between Denali and Mount Logan, North America's highest and second highest mountains, respectively. This configuration brings a line through the Comox Valley within a few hundred meters of splitting Hornby Island from Denman Island. Zooming out a bit and moving the line about a kilometer and a half shows the apparent influence of this alignment corresponding to the valley's hexagonal geometry. It matches our defining hexagons bisector 
within 14 one hundredths of a degree. Mount Kailash is also known as the seventh or crown chakra of the seven so-called earth chakras. We'll come back to these chakras, but first let's take a bit deeper look at our Easter Island alignment. Creating a circle centered on Mount Kailash with radius of exactly 6,660 miles brings it to the edge of the Hornby hexagon. The 6,660 mile distance to the Hornby hexagon shows that the bedrock geometry of the Comox Valley not only has repeating digits encoded in its dimensions, but also in its relationships. Another example is the distance between the centers of the two hexagons being 666,666 inches. You can see the patterning continues over Comox and the Air Force Base, moving the foundation lines to an apex of this Comox hexagon shows how its positioning and size are set by the nearly perpendicular linemans and the headquarters of the Freemasonic Lodge 188. This perpendicular point also anchors a line from Easter Island that passes just 600 meters from the peak of Mount Shasta, which is another earth chakra, this time the first or root chakra. Mount Shasta has important geography, both physical and human. It is the second highest and most voluminous volcano in the Cascade Volcanic Arc. The mountain is well known as a sacred site and has been the subject of an unusually large number of myths and legends. I came across these seven earth chakras early in my research on a website by Robert Kuhn, who seems to be the source of this information. I can't say whether the New Age story he tells about the chakras is true, but I do know they keep showing up again and again in important alignments I've found. I'm listing the chakras for completeness because they continue to play such an important role in the rest of this video series. Mount Shasta is the first or root chakra. Isla de Sol is the second or sacral. Oluru is the third chakra corresponding to the solar plexus. Glastonbury, Shaftesbury is the fourth or heart chakra. The fifth or throat chakra is the Great Pyramid. The sixth or third eye is Kui Malek Sia in Iran on the border of Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Amazing geopolitical intersection of New World meddling. The seventh or crown chakra is Mount Kailash as we've already seen. 